Have you ever stayed in an Airbnb type of property and thought, I could do this? I'm Cindy Wadsworth. And I'm Pete Pacina. And we're with the Cindy Wadsworth team at eXp Realty. So we are now in phase two of our three-part series on investing. And today we're going to talk about short-term rentals. We've actually owned short-term rentals and we've done it both ways. Part of it is you can make it active and actually be the person who's doing all the bookings and everything, or you can make it more passive where you hire a company to do all the bookings for you. But either way, you're still going to have to be involved. However, the benefits far outweigh actually having to be involved because if you have a home that you do as a long-term rental, you may be able to make a few thousand dollars a month in monthly rent, but with a short-term rental, you can make three to five times that a month depending on the property. Yep, so especially if it's in a desirable area, mm -hmm. right? And that's what we're gonna cover next. What are some of the key things that'll make a short-term rental successful? Number one, location. You want to make sure that you're in an area that's desirable, that there's a reason why people are coming to stay at that area. Number two, there's a lot of saturation right now in short-term rentals, but some properties are still making a killing because they're unique. They're giving a, a very unique experience. The property itself is unique. There's a focus on hospitality and stay rather than just having a room for rent or a home for rent, right? So there's a couple key factors that we want to think about. There's a couple rules. Number one is a Starbucks rule. This was in a, uh, a recent article from Bigger Pockets, right? And they talk about if you are in an area within three miles of a Starbucks, they've spent all the money on doing all the demographics yeah. already. So you know that there's a good likelihood that the income ratio and the ability for someone to pay a little bit of a higher price for your property is going to be there. Yeah. Number two is if you're near a home with suites because they've done all the research to see where people are actually staying for a little bit longer than an overnight for and, and they get a suite type of property. Yep. And all that research is done for you. Yep. Right? So, and there's also a third thing where you can do the, the research on your own, looking at specific areas, and that's airdna.co, not .com, but .co. It's a paid service, it's about $40 a month. You can go in there, put a specific zip code, and find out all the activity for all the current short-term rentals that are on there, Airbnbs, BRBOs, et cetera. You can really do some market research. Yeah, the other thing with location that you wanna think about is, as Pete said a little bit, you, you wanna make sure that it's a destination, and some of the really good destinations, besides like the beaches and and, and the places where people go for experiences are around college campuses mm -hmm. for parents coming for parents weekend and whatnot or around military bases where people are going to see their their families absolutely so unique destination themes all those things are super important it gives you the leg up against your competition and allows you to create a really good income stream from a property that pretty much could give you an outsized return compared to a regular rental. oh yeah if you have more questions about how to get started, or if you already have one, you want to talk about expanding your portfolio, please feel free to reach out to us. We can share all the pros and cons, the nightmares, and yep, the huge benefits. Yeah, we've had them all. We've had them all. <laughs> Until next time, have a great day. Thanks. Bye. Bye-bye.